Um, so brainstem behavior is coordinative at a very high level. It's the brainstem's conversation with the spinal cord that we are interested in here. We're gonna talk about central pattern generators today. So, so central pattern generators are a level below that. It's not external context that these CPGs are primarily acting uh, with regard to. CPGs are acting, they're making decisions about movement and autonomic regulation, et cetera, uh, that, uh, that have to do with the context of the body. What position is your body in? What rhythm is your body in? What autonomic state is your body in? These are the vocabulary that are, is intelligible to the central pattern generators. So as I'm coming along here, I know I'm using a lot of lingo. I'm trying to be fairly uh, accessible. And I also know that we're talking about stuff that's tricky to describe. So I do indeed welcome your comments. I welcome your presence. Um, I can, I'm so excited. I keep knocking down my notebook. And so there's this phenomenon of involuntary and yet intelligent behavior that, uh, that can be unsettling to both practitioner and, uh, and uh, experiencer <laughs> um, because uh, you're used to feeling in charge of your body. You're used to uh, taking ownership of your movements. I have a great quote about that that I'm gonna pull up from Peggy Mason's Neurobiology. Uh, our conscious perception selectively filters <laughs> for movements that we are in conscious control over. So it, we could be blamed, we, we, we wouldn't be blamed necessarily for assuming that most movement is voluntary. Many of us assume that involuntary movement is the exception. And this story is one about how wrong that assumption is. Voluntary movement is the strange thing. Voluntary top-down movement driven by your conscious will, that is the outlier. Uh, the majority of movement we do is both involuntary and below the level of normal perception. And that's what makes it weird <laughs> when we move involuntarily and notice it consciously. It takes certain rare states for that to happen. And it's in those moments uh, that the unfamiliarity of experiencing your body moving without your will behind it, um, that, that people can get a little freaked out. They might have an interpretive framework around that, that a spirit is coming into them, okay? Or they might have a, uh, a fear response, like they can't control their own body. Or they might... Uh, enjoy the ride. <laughs> we'll, you know, we, we hope for the latter. So um, to that end, if you, if you are a nerd at all for sort of the nervous system, um, I, I must say that this is one of the most worthwhile texts that you can get. It's by Peggy Mason, um, and it's called Medical Neurobiology. Absolute stunner of a book. So fun <laughs> to... Uh, uh, to, to, to sort of read, such a good writer, such a clear thinker. Um, so I'm going to give you two short readings from Peggy Mason here. Are you ready? It's, it's going to be like, you know, I'll take I'll take requests for voices. You know, should I do like Sean Connery? Should I do Arnold Schwarzenegger, James Earl Jones? We'll see. I'll just I'll just sp speak it in my voice. Okay, from Peggy Mason. The brain directs cognitive actions that form expressions of inner affect and deliberative thought, while also influencing the most basic reflexive and semi-automatic movements. The result is a unified motor expression of self, from spoken words to gait to facial expression. Thus, although we discuss the motor system in heuristically convenient chunks, the biological reality is one of integrated function and coherent output. Let us begin. That's Peggy Mason for you. And here's another little, little snippet from there. 
So we are so accustomed to being responsible for our own movements that we take conscious credit for automatic movements where such credit may not be warranted. As in, I stumbled, but I just caught myself in time. Those two quotes from Peggy Mason um, are telling a story that our movement system is a biological integrated whole. So these slices that we are discussing are convenient for our understanding, but they don't represent separate layers <laughs> in reality. It's integrated. At the same time, movement that we would call voluntary, as in directed by uh, our consciously perceived will, <laughs> is uh, the minority of movement. Uh, most movement is automatic or semi-automatic. Um, and, uh, and, and that's a big mystery. If that, seems, if that seems a surprise, it's because we are right on the cusp of some understandings, at least I am, <laughs> right on the cusp of some understandings that, uh, that have heretofore not been known. This hasn't been well described yet. We are learning new things every year about central pattern generators and about the movement implications uh, and, the, and the sort of implications for expression and autonomic regulation um, that come out of this, this bit. 